Okay, today we're going to do the lesson 6.7 in your Go Math books. Um, we're on page 365. Today's essential question is, how can you compare fractions? Okay, so first thing I notice is compare, is my verb. And so when I compare, that means I'm going to put two fractions next to each other and decide which one's bigger, which one's smaller, or are they equal? Okay, so let's go to our problem and see what two fractions we're working with. This problem says, Every year, Avery School has a fair. This fair, this year, three-eighths of the booths had face painting and one-fourth of the booths had sand art. Were there more booths with face painting or sand art? Okay, so I want to know which one's more. More booths with face painting or sand art. And the stuff that, and the facts that I need to know is three-eighths of the booths were face painting and one-fourth of the booths had sand art. Okay. Okay, so I'm comparing today three-eighths and one-fourth, and I want to see which one's biggest because it's asking for more, okay? Right away, I notice that I have different denominators, okay? When I have different denominators, that means the size of my parts in my fraction are different sizes. For example, if I drew a real quick picture, fourths and eighths, you can see that eighths are much smaller parts than fourths, so it's more difficult to compare if they're not the same size. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to find a common denominator. We did this in earlier in the chapter, and so the first thing for common denominators is I need to look for a f factor of both, or I'm sorry, a multiple of both, um, four and eight, because those are my two denominators. Okay. Right away, I notice that eight is a factor or a multiple of four. So I can go ahead and use 8 as my common denominator, okay? So I'm going to take 1 fourth and I need to multiply that denominator times something to get to 8, okay? And I know that 4 times 2 equals 8. If I want my fraction to be equivalent to what I started with, then I need to make sure I multiply the denominator and the numerator by the same thing, okay? So now I have 1 times 2 to get my numerator. So you could say that 1 fourth is equal to 2 eighths. Those are equivalent fractions, okay? And I went ahead and did that because I needed an 8 in the denominator. Do I need to do anything to 3 eighths to get an, an 8 in the denominator? Nope, it's already there, okay? And so you can see 3 eighths already has an 8 as a denominator, okay? So now, instead of comparing 3 eighths and 1 fourth, I'm comparing 3 eighths and 2 eighths, okay? So I'm going to shade the model to show 3 eighths. And then I'm going to shade the model to show two eighths. Well, now it's really easy to tell which one's bigger or smaller, okay? You can see, obviously, that the three eighths is more than two eighths because the numerator is larger in three eighths than in two eighths, okay? Now we're going to go down to the bottom, and now we're going to use a common numerator, okay? When two fractions have the same numerator, they represent the same number of parts and you can compare the size of the parts instead of the number of parts, okay? So, in my fraction up at the, or my fractions that I was comparing, I'm going to rewrite them, they were 3 eighths and 1 fourth, okay? You can think that 3 is a multiple of both 3 and 1, so I'm trying to figure out which common numerator to do. Okay, so this time, I'm going to try to make both my numerators into a 3. 1 fourth Okay, if I want to end up with a 3 in the numerator, I need to multiply 1 by 3. 1 times 3 equals 3, so to be equivalent, I have to do the same thing to the bottom. 4 times 3 equals 12, okay? Now, in order to get a 3 in the numerator, do I need to change anything about 3 eighths? Nope, I don't. It's already there, okay? And so now I'm going to do the same thing I did before, but this time I'm going to compare um, 3 eighths and 3 twelfths. Okay, so still coloring in three parts this time, but you'll notice that the parts are different sizes. Okay, and I know that if I have the same number of parts, but eighths are bigger than twelfths, then that means three eighths are going to be bigger than three twelfths. Okay, we got the same result, just did it two different ways. Okay, since three eighths is greater than one fourth, there were more booths that were, go back up to the top, three-eighths of face painting. So, more booths with face painting. 
these two ways um, both work. So it's really your choice. Do you want to find a common denominator or do you want to find a common numerator? You don't have to do both to do it. You just have to pick one way that makes the most sense to you and works for your problem. Okay, now we're going to work on page 366. And they have um, four problems for us to try, A, B, C, and D. And it says, compare the fractions. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so in the beginning of this lesson, you learned how to compare fractions using common numerators or common denominators. In the previous lesson, you learned how to compare fractions using benchmark numbers. So really, I have three choices on how I can do this. I can use benchmarks, I can use common numerator, or common denominator, okay? So I'm just going to list my choices up there. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I like to know what my choices are or how did I can do this, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I look at this problem. And really the easiest thing for me is always benchmarks. So I'm going to really quickly draw myself a number line. I'm going to put a 0 in and a 1 in, okay? And then my benchmark is usually 1 half, okay? I know that half of 4 is 2, so 3 fourths has to be somewhere up here, okay? I know that one third, well, half of three is like one and a half, so this has to be less than. So I already know which one's bigger, okay? I can say that three fourths is greater than one third, okay? And all I have to do to explain my reasoning is say that I, um, I compared the fractions. using the benchmark one half okay and I could even go a little further and say that three-fourths is greater than one-half and one-third is less than one-half okay to show my, re my thinking okay I'm going to try the same thing on part B because I know that's the easiest way for me to do it. Okay, so I'm going to make another number line really quickly. It's not hard. Zero and one, and one half goes right in the middle. Okay, so now I have three fifths and three eighths. Okay, um, three fifths. Well, half of five is like two and a half, and three is greater than two and a half. So that means it has to be more than half. Three fifths is somewhere over here. Okay, I don't know exactly where. 3 eighths, well half of 8 is 4, so this has to be less than 1 half, so 3 eighths is somewhere over here. So did this method work again? Yeah. Okay. So the same explanation works on this one. Oh, first of all, I probably should say that it's greater than. Okay. So again, I compared the fractions using the benchmark 1 half. And I could even, again, say that 3 fifths is greater than 1 half, and 1 half is greater than 3 eighths, okay? So that means that 3 fifths has to be also greater than 3 eighths, okay? Okay, down to the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look and see if I can use my benchmark numbers, okay? So, 0, 1, 1 half, okay? Well, I know that three, or 3 is more than half of 4, so that's greater than 1 half. And 7 eighths, ooh, half of 8 is 4, and 7 is also greater than. So both of my fractions this time are greater than 1 half. So I'm going to have to use some other method beside benchmark numbers. This time I think I'm going to try, um, I think I'm going to do common denominator because I see 4 and 8. I can easily multiply the 4 to get to the 8. Okay, so I'm going to change my 3 fourths into a fraction that has eighths. I knew to go to eighths because eight is a multiple of four. Okay, so to do that, four times two equals eight. So I need to do the same thing to the top to get an equivalent fraction. Three times two is six. Okay, so now it's like I'm comparing six eighths to seven eighths. Well, that's pretty simple. Okay. I can see that if I have the same equal size parts, eighths, and there's one more that's shaded in, then obviously seven eighths is bigger than six eighths. Okay? 
So on this explanation, I would say I found a common denominator and then compared the number of parts, which is the numerator. And I can even put in parentheses numerator so they know that I know what a num numerator is. Okay? All right, next problem. Over here, I'm going to start with the easiest method. That's benchmarks for me. So I'm going to put out my number line. I have a 0 and I have a 1. In the middle is 1 half. Okay? So half of 5 is like 2 and a half. So 4 fifths is going to be up here somewhere. Okay? Half of 3 is like 1 and a half. And 2 is bigger than 1 and a half. So 2 thirds is also up here somewhere. So I can't use benchmark numbers this time. Okay? So I'm going to have to use either common denominator or common numerator. Okay, when I look at the problem, I see that 5 and 3 are not multiples of each other or factors of each other, so that makes it a little harder. So this time I see that 2 and 4, well 4 is a multiple of 2, so that's going to be easier for me. So I'm going to take 2 thirds, and I want to find an equivalent fraction that has a 4 in the numerator. Okay, so to get from 2 to 4, that's like multiplying times 2. So then at the bottom, to make it equivalent, I have to do the same thing. 3 times 2 is 6. So now it's like I'm comparing 4 fifths to 4 sixths. Okay? And when I do that, I know that if you have more parts, the parts have to be smaller. Okay? So 4 sixths are smaller pieces than 4 fifths. Okay? So I'm going to say that 4 fifths is greater than 4 sixths. Okay? So I found a common numerator this time. And then compared the size of the parts this time. And we could say fifths are bigger than sixths. So that's why we chose four fifths rather than four sixths. Okay? Okay, for the last two problems, they're going to ask us a question about a couple of um, fractions, and we're going to see what we can use from what we have already learned so far in this lesson to answer. The first question says, which would you use to compare 11 twelfths and 5 sixths? A common numerator or a common denominator? Explain. Okay, so if you think back to the two that problems that we just did with common denominator in this case and common numerator in this case, how did we decide which one to use? Okay, what we did was we looked at the denominators to see if either one was a multiple of the other. Okay, and in this case the denominator had a multiple, 8, of 4. And then in this case we, looked, we saw that the numerators had a multiple of 4 or 2. So that's why we did numerator here and denominator here. So can we do that here? Okay, so let's compare. Our denominators are 6 and 12. Automatically, I right away see that 6, um, if I count by 6's, my multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24. So I can go ahead and decide to use the denominator. Okay, really quickly, I'm just going to check the numerator to be sure. Okay, 5, 10, 15. I go right past 11, so that's not very helpful to me. So in this case, I would use a common denominator. Now, they don't ask us to actually find the answer. They just ask us how we would do it. A common denominator, because 12 is a multiple of 6. Okay. Next problem at the bottom. Can you use the simplest form to compare 8 tenths and 3 fifths? Well, yeah, because if I simplify 8 tenths, I can divide both of those by 2. Okay. So 8 divided by 2 is 4 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now I'm comparing 4 fifths and 3 fifths. So the simplest form gave me common, a common denominator. All right, now it's your turn. You need to go ahead and work on page 367 and do the share and show. Um, make sure you at least get to numbers three and four so that we can grade those.